This video will be the first out of a short series that will walk through the steps of building a table saw at home. Mine will be based on this 9 inch 2200 watt Bosch circular saw. And I'll start by building this fence. The thing about building a table saw is that it's a lot easier to do if you already have one. So the first thing I did was to build this simple frame from some scrap wood and to connect the saw to the bottom of the tabletop with some more scrap wood. I could drill holes in the saw and run bolts through them instead, but I decided not to change anything in the saw at this stage. I also glued to the tabletop a piece of hardwood for the fence to ride on and built a simple square to use as a cutting guide. Now that the basic saw is ready, I can start building the fence. The first thing I did was to cut all the parts for the fence out of 18mm or 3 quarters of an inch plywood. Oh, and I made some of these nice push sticks using a template by Matthias Wandel. There's a link in the description for that if you're interested. This is the base of the T-assembly that I cut with the jigsaw. Now, I want to add a magnet to it. You'll soon see why. Because I didn't have a strong enough magnet, I took one from an old hard drive. This is where I want it to be. So, using a drill and a chisel, I made a small cavity for it and glued it in place with some epoxy. While the epoxy was drying, I cut a small metal plate with the angle grinder and screwed it in place. This will be the rub plate. This part, made out of two 18mm plywood pieces glued together, will clamp the fence in place. I made a metal plate for it as well, so the magnet could attract it and hold the part in place. I could now drill a hole for the tightening screw and chisel away some room for a nut. To glue the nut in place, I used some epoxy and the screw wrapped in cling film to make sure the nut stays aligned when I push it into place. And after some persuasion, I was able to get it all the way in. After about 10 minutes, I removed the screw and left the part to dry. And now for the knob. I cut it on the jigsaw as well and drilled a slightly undersized hole for the head of the screw. I then glued the screw in place with some epoxy and added a round plywood spacer. I used a washer and a nut to clamp the knob while the glue dried. Now that all the parts are ready, I can start putting them together. First off, the T-assembly. for the fence itself. In order to make it a bit easier to keep the parts aligned, I decided to first glue and screw into place the first part, and only then start working on the second one. I made sure the upper part was aligned, and drilled some pilot holes for the screws. Before taking the part out and applying some glue, I marked its exact position so it will be easier to put it back in place. Gluing this part when the bottom part was already glued proved to be pretty difficult since the glue made it harder to move the part and position it in the right place, but it worked out eventually after some persuasion. I now checked if the fence was square with the table. Using some backlight, it was clear that it wasn't. There's a gap on the bottom, but not on the top. And when I push it into square, there's a small gap below the fence. So, in order to get the fence square, I planed the slightly higher side. To check my progress, I used a small clamp to hold my phone in place, so I can use it as a light source. 
Looking at the gap between the fence and the square, it could be pretty difficult to see when the alignment is just right. So instead, I looked at the light my phone shone on the fence through the gap between the fence and the square. When I changed the angle of the fence, the angle of the line between the illuminated and the dark area changes. I have to get it exactly parallel, so I have some more work. And after some more fine tuning, now it's just right. You can see that the border of the lit area is exactly parallel to the square. I really like these plywood shavings. Next, I glued the T-assembly in place. I didn't use glue on the tight internal joints because I feared it would make it a lot more difficult to align. After some back and forth, when I was happy with the alignment, I clamped it and left it to dry. Once the glue was dry, I added some screws all around and trimmed the fence to length. And that was it. After painting the knob black and applying a couple of coats of water-based finish, the fence was ready to be used. The magnet makes it possible to snap the clamp right into place. And now the fence can slide from side to side. I can tighten the knob to make it stay in place. And if I want to remove the fence, the magnet makes it really easy to simply loosen the knob, pull the clamp off, and remove the fence. I'm really happy with the result, I think it came out great. And be sure to join me next time as I make the miter slots and build the crosscuts lid. Thanks for watching! If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. You might also like these videos.